Welcome to our Exploring the Proof Sheet course. This course was designed to help you understand the information on a Sire's proof page. It's all too easy to get lost and overwhelmed by the data on a bull proof. In this course, you will explore where this information comes from, what it means, and how to apply it. We're confident you will take away impactful outcomes that you can apply to your work immediately. Let's go over how to navigate this course. Everything is branched from the Sire proof page. You can click anywhere on this landing page to learn more about specific content, including on numbers, headers, logos, and any text. After clicking off the Sire proof page, you can always return to it by clicking the next button in the bottom right of your screen. Once you have visited a section, you will automatically be returned to the Sire Proof landing page to explore another topic. The text or image color will turn to gray on any completed topics, indicating you have already been there. You can always go back into that section to review it later if you want, but it will turn gray after that first visit. Once you have gone through all the sections, you can click the Go To Final Quiz page. If you prefer to bypass some sections, you can attempt the quiz at any time during the course. Let's get started. EFI stands for Expected Future Inbreeding. It measures how related a bull is to the average population. A higher number means the bull is more related to the breeding cow population. For example, if we breed a bull with an EFI of 7.9% to 100 cows, the progeny will have 
on average, an inbreeding of 7.9%. Individually, some may be higher and some may be lower. The Council on Dairy Cattle Breeding calculates this number by averaging the relatedness between a sire and a random set of 1,000 females born in the last four years. In theory, using a bull with a lower EFI should result in less inbred progeny. However, it is important to understand the genetics in your herd because they may be different than the industry population. A bull may create more inbreeding in your neighbor's herd than your herd, or vice versa, based on the bulls previously used in your herd. It is important to accurately identify your animals, focus on genetic improvement, and consider managing inbreeding on a herd level as opposed to preventing it. It is important to note the low frequency of these undesirable traits due to strategic AI focus to reduce them. It is recommended not to eliminate carrier sires in a genetic plan, but to manage homozygous recessive occurrences with a mating program. It is important to note the low frequency of these under It is important to note the low frequency of these undesirable traits due to strategic AI focus to reduce them. It is recommended not to eliminate carrier sires in a genetic plan, but to manage homozygous recessive occurrences with a mating program. Beta casein has drawn interest from dairies with a unique A2 milk market. This milk is marketed in some locations as having improved digestibility for people with dairy intolerance while also decreasing risk for heart disease and diabetes. It is important to first determine if your processing plant pays a premium for this milk before making selection decisions for A2 genetics. The A1 and A2 variants are the most common beta casein gene mutations. Any given bovine will be either heterozygous, 
A1A2, or homozygous, A1A1 or A2A2. True A2 milk can only be produced from cattle homozygous for the A2 allele. So, the one and only deciding factor whether milk is A1 or A2 lies in the genetics of the animal producing the milk. So how do we take an average herd and create an A2 herd? Any herd will naturally have a combination of A1A1, A1A2, and A2A2 cows. Let's say you decided to use 100% A2A2 mating sires starting today. The resulting progeny from the A1A1 cows would all be heterozygous. Half of the progeny from the A1A2 cows would be heterozygous, and the other half would be the A2A2 homozygous genotype. Finally, the progeny resulting from the A2A2 cows would all be homozygous for the A2A2 combination. Therefore, in one generation, the A1A1 genotype can be eliminated while increasing the frequency of A2A2 cows. In reality, your starting herd is not likely equally divided among the genotypes. Typically, 13% would be A1A1, 46% A1A2, and 41% A2A2 based on gene frequencies. Therefore, in a 1,000 cow dairy, we'd start with 130 A1A1 cows, 460 A1A2 cows, and 410 A2A2 cows. This table shows how using exclusive A2A2 sires would move cows from the A1A2 group to the A2A2 group over each generation. Assuming you don't choose to selectively cull any A1A2 cows, the heterozygous genotype will continue to be present for many generations. Depending on the initial genotype frequencies of your herd, we would expect to be under 10% a1A2 cows in three or four generations, and under 1% A1A2 cows in six or seven generations. If we would select against the A1 allele, converting to a 100% A2A2 herd could be done faster. The key to remember is that you should first identify if your milk plant pays a premium for A2 milk before incorporating this selection tool into your genetic plan.
To better meet producer needs, Gen X, with its reputation as an industry pioneer, developed a progressive genetic selection tool with modern operations in mind. Gen X created the ICC Index after producers asked for a better way to rank sires that created cows which would excel in commercial conditions. The index was introduced into the industry in 2014. The index was originally designed for Holstein breed. However, in 2017, Gen X introduced the second version of the index for jerseys. The premise for both indexes is the same. The total value of the ICC index is calculated through sub-indexes. The Holstein ICC is calculated off of five sub-indexes, and the Jersey ICC is calculated off of three. The five sub-indexes that make up Holstein ICC are production efficiency, which is 47%, health, 24%, fertility and fitness, 14%, milking ability, 10%, and calving ability, 5%. The three sub-indexes that make up Jersey ICC are cheese maximizer at 43%, sustainability at 35%, and fertility at 23%.